Hey everybody, welcome back. Sorry again for the delays between videos, it's been a little hectic lately, but hopefully we're gonna get to continue on here. I think I'm on day four, I'm really not sure. Yeah, day four. Wake up, blah blah blah, okay. Grace is not happy that I was, you know, Gabriel was doing crazy stuff. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. so we haven't talked to Grace yet, we have not looked at the newspaper, so let's get that done. Time stated June 21st, 1993. Gabriel's eye is immediately drawn to an article about the voodoo murders. He scans it quickly. I don't believe this. They've closed the case. What case? The voodoo murders case. The paper says that the police have learned that the murders were a result of an underworld cartel war and that the war is over. That's not good? It's ridiculous. And what about the killers? And the voodoo angle, they never got anything on that. I know you were into it, Gabriel, but if it's over, that's hardly a negative. Anyway, if you're that upset, why don't you talk it over with your pal Mosley? Gonna have don't to. get it, Grace. Just forget it, okay? Gabriel decides to check his horoscope, despite his disgust. Death walks close to you today. Resist temptation lest his eye fall on you, too. Peachy. <laughs> Gabriel also spots an ad for Sam Springleton, a jeweler. Sam hangs out at the Napoleon house. That'll be good for taking that uh, clay imprint of the bracelet thing from the last video. Wins all around. Well, let's just go and have ourselves an extra cup of coffee, maybe? Just because. Mmm, good coffee. Okay, so things are out of order Good coffee. from what I remember way back in the dark ages of uh, you know, 256 color gaming here, and uh, I feel like I've missed a lot. What's up? What's up? Okay. Do you know anything about a secret voodoo houndfall? In New Orleans? I think so. No, I don't, but it sounds dangerous. You're not going to try to find this voodoo group yourself, are you? Yes. Would I do that? Yes. Messages. Do you have messages for me? Your grandmother called. She said to remind you to stop by and go through your father's things. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Yes, finally. Why is that moved to day four? That was always like a day one thing. Do you Jeez. have messages for me? That man from Germany called again. Wolfgang Ritter. Now he's claiming to be a relative of yours. Interesting. Okay, might be worth calling him back. Can I get that phone number for Wolfgang Ritter? Sure, I'll give it to you when we're done talking. Alright. There's really nothing else that she could tell me. Do you have messages for me? I've given... She's given everything. Here's right. that phone number. Thanks. Whoa, her neck kind of went funky there. Uh, Let's go call Wolfgang. Do, 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 do. Ring, ring. This will be an expensive call. We'll call collect. <laughs> Didn't Grace say you had to dial 011 first to get international? Is that how it works? I can't say I've ever actually called anything international. Uh, I lost my train of thought there. Alright. Yeah, this one, this one. This one, this one, and a lot of threes. I'm not calling Germany. That Wolfgang Ritter guy says he's a relative, but I've never heard of him. God damn it, Gabriel. You cheap bastard. Maybe we'll use another phone somewhere. Like the police hey, station. Kids. Mm. Oh god. Bruno. Gabe Pet, I just popped in to see if you're desperate enough to sell me that painting. All right, fine. How much would you give me for it? Oh, you're serious? You'll let me have it? Gabriel, don't you dare sell your father's painting. Yeah, I'll let you have it, all right. How much for the painting? Hmm, well, I could give you a hundred. That's all I can let go at the moment, you know. My affairs are so tied up. Gabriel, 
A hundred dollars for your father's painting? Stay out of this, Grace. All right, fine. Fine. It's yours. Gabriel! Here. Here's the hundred. You better take good care of this, Bruno. This is not just another of your hip art pieces, you know. Really? Well, I fully intend to make the most of its display. Though not for your sake, I'm sure. At least in my shop, there'll be a chance of someone actually seeing it. Can I, like, beat him over the head with it? That'd be amazing. I can't believe I actually got it. Just wait until I show Sid. Oh my. I don't believe you. It's, it's just a painting, Grace. There are things I have to do. It looks so empty over there now. That's the problem. <sighs> okay, so... To the map. Okay, things I know we can do. We can head over here to the jeweler, but... A sign on the front door of Magenta's home reads, Attuning with the spirit realm, back on June 22nd. I thought she was something else. But this is now open, because it's the 21st. Hmm. Well, let's see what we get. Alright, so that's the band. Oh, that's Madam someone Madam Lorelei, the fortune teller, is garbed in a belly dancer's outfit and wears a boa around her neck. A real boa. Alright, I know where we're going. To the park. The music is pretty awesome, though. I just want to walk around this way. That drummer still kind of creeps me out. I do like how everybody's playing the same song, though. These guys are definitely a little more lively, though. A little Zydeco. <laughs> Alright. Madam Lorelei, is it? What can I do for you, handsome? Well. How's business? How's business? <laughs> I have no time for such dull conversation, darling. Well, 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 okay. How about a reading? The prices are listed on the sign. They seem a little steep. Well, I sometimes do my intimate friends for nothing. But I am a businesswoman. I'm sure you are. That's nice a nice snake. snake you have there. Oh, I could say the same of you. Hmm. Well, I know where I got mine. Where'd you get yours? <laughs> That's personal. Well, so is mine, technically. I'd really like to know more about that snake. Oh, sorry, sweetie, but I don't discuss Elvis with anyone. His name is Elvis. Elvis. Nothing. Well, then move aside, sweetie, but stay where I can look at you, okay? Right. I'm just gonna go over here now. Kind of creepy woman. Hey, what's up with this dude? Hey, Crash, wait up! Crash only looks scared and keeps walking. Okay. Come on, boys! Hoopla! Hoopla! Nice. I'm looking. I'm looking. Gabriel leers at the dancer, but she seems to want a more overt demonstration of his appreciation. Uh, Not a bad idea. Mmm, <laughs> baby, I love the way you move. Madam Lorelei winks knowingly at Gabriel and twitches her hips. Yep, she wants me. <laughs> Alright, so this is going on for a little while here. Thanks, boys. So she drops the veil, obviously on purpose, and leaves it there. Gabriel steps all over it. Hmm. Can we in 
inspect this? Gabriel examines the veil with the magnifying glass. The uh -huh. fortune teller's veil is studded with sequins. The sequins look a little strange. Why? It's a it's snake, a scale. snake scale. Yoink. Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to remove the snake scale from the veil. Now, are these the same? No, they're not. The iridescent scale is hued olive green. It doesn't seem to match the scale from Lake Pontchartrain. Well, there we go. That's kind of something. I guess there's nothing else we could do with her at the moment. So, we've learned things that we've learned. Uh, where's Gabriel's grandma's house? Do we still not have grandma's house? That's Napoleon house. There's Grandma Knight. Finally. I'm so glad you stopped by. Oh, sorry it's been a while, Grandma. Not at all. <laughs> Give me a kiss. Now, come on, sit down. Tell me how you're doing. There we go. I was starting to get mildly concerning. How have you been, Grant? Just fine, dear. I'm sorry I bothered you at work, but um, I was hoping you'd get a chance to go through your father's things in the attic. Don't be silly. You can call me anytime. Okay, lots of things. Let's just go to what matters. Tell me about our family. Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father, or your mother? Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He walked his way through school, met and married me, and we had your father, Philip. Tell me more. Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad supported me and your father with bookkeeping. Oh, I'll tell you what, though. He hated every minute of it. Didn't really like bookkeeping one bit. Maybe that was why he had the worst luck with jobs. Oh, the nights he'd come home afraid to tell me he lost another. And I'd tell him it didn't matter to me, but he felt ashamed, Gabriel. Okay. Tell me something about Granddad. Harrison was only 36 when he died. Your father was eight years old at the time. Your granddad was hit by a streetcar in the business district. Well, it took go. me nearly a year to believe he was really gone. I'm sorry, Grant. Oh, I know you are, dear. What a terrible way to go. Tell me something about Granddad. Did you know that your Granddad was a poet? He was. He wrote the most beautiful poetry for me when we were courting. I always thought he should have done something with that gift, but he was such a practical man. Didn't believe in chasing after dreams. All right. Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we adored him. Tell me about my father. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. Oh, they were two peas in a pod. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Tell me about my father. When Philip met your mother, oh, it was love at first sight. They were married two weeks later. Wow. Never looked at a girl seriously until then, and he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. <laughs> Tell me about my father. I wanted to just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. Hmm. It was the thought of taking care of you that kept me going, Gabriel. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer on the road or... Or wildcat. Kind of funny how both fathers died when, you know, their kids were eight. Tell me about my father. Your granddad wanted Philip to have a normal life. He was obsessed by that thought. He pushed Philip to go to law school, 
But Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he walked. Tell me more. Tell me. He always hated that it was Margaret's money that supported the three of you when he... I kept telling him, try something more cheerful, like a landscape or two, but he couldn't do it. His work was just too dark and disturbing for the public, you know. I just made a hundred bucks off of that. Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course, but I also think she liked to find her family. <laughs> Since you're so interested in family history these days, why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and visit the family tomb? It would be such a sweet gesture. It's just past the Ross tomb, right? Oh, maybe I will. All right, we're Tell learning things. My mother. Your mother's family refused to give her money after the marriage. All she had left was a modest trust fund from her great aunt, who happened to like Philip. The remainder of your mother's trust fund became yours when she died. That's what you used to open your bookshop. Tell me about my mother. The Templetons are all gone now. Every last one of them. Oh, they never wanted anything to do with us, of course. What a waste. All right. So many options, and she's probably not going to have any information on any of this. Does the name Ogun Badakri mean anything to you? What, dear? Never mind. I, that's what I thought. Does the phrase Cabri Sanko mean anything to you? Hmm. Something without something, I think. No, it's okay. Thanks. Yeah, she's not going to know anything. You know, you get prettier every time I see you. <laughs> oh, you. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? What an odd question, Gabriel. Of course, you always were interested in monster movies and all that other weird stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty stuff. sure it's not monster You get that from your movies. father and granddad. I don't know anything about it, dear. Of course, it was very big in New Orleans at one time, but you don't hear so much about it these days. No. Too much else in the world to worry about, I guess. Yep. All right, there's nothing more to really... Oh, nothing. Never mind. All right, dear. In the interest of uh, moving forward here. The sofa has a worn blue chintz pattern that Gabriel remembers fondly. Grand's knitting. She whips through that stuff like there was no tomorrow. What do we got here? Well, Grand, I no, 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 get... no, no, no. All right, be good. I want to go I up to the attic. Grant. I meant to. I was clicking pictures, but it put me back outside. That's not what I want. How awkward. Hi, I just left, but I'm back. Gabriel, my love. How nice to see you. From 30 nice seconds to ago. See you too, Graham. Alright. Now can I look at this? Thank Mostly you. Mostly pictures of Gabriel, his dad, and Harrison Knight. To the attic. I'm gonna go up to the attic, Grant. Be careful of the dust. Oh no, not the dust. It will get me. Uh, things to play with. Hmm. There's an interesting design in the base of the clock. I'm trying to see here. Can I? What can I do? With, okay, I can set the clock. Uh -huh. Um. Hmm. All right. We need a clue. I'm just trying to think here. It looks pretty heavy. Well, then just open it. There's a lot of granddad's old stuff in here. Might be something interesting. How about the letters? A bundle of letters. Love letters between Harrison and Rebecca. Isn't that nice? More of Harrison Knight's German books. Just what I need. 
some old clothes, including a pair of leather shorts. Aren't those called lederhosen? Bible. So that's it. We just like barely pick it up. Seems kind of awkward. Aha! What's this? It's some sort of key. Some old clothes, including a pair of leather shorts. Aren't those called late? Um, hot stein. All right. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything else here. Hmm. Is there anything else I can? Nope. Doesn't look like it. What else we got? Well, let's do this again. Keyhole. Turn the key. Nothing happens. Okay. So now we need to set the clock, but what time does it need to be? Uh, la 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 la. How about the time it is now? Nothing happens. Okay. I don't know. Hmm. Oh! I see. God, I'm trying to remember. I honestly thought that three was the answer, but I don't remember fully. It is! The key winds the clock's mechanism. <laughs> Granddaddy, you old fox. The question is, what was the, the basis of that? I honestly entirely forget. Let me go back into the box. That's actually from memory. I don't think there's anything else in that trunk that would interest anybody but my grand. Hmm. That's actually from memory. I just don't remember the logic behind it. So for that, I apologize, but... It's an old dusty bicycle tire. Hmm. It's an old dress dummy that Gran had in her sewing room years ago. My first impression of the female form. <laughs> Ooh, a hat. Can I have that? I think hat? I'll leave that up here. Oh, I wanted to take the hat. It's a lady's hat from the 1920s. And from Grand's Virginia Woolf period. <laughs> I was gonna say, we should put Gabriel in the hat. Didn't really know it was a female hat, but just the same. We could have put Gabriel in the hat. The sheet covered upholstered rocker used to be in Gabriel's nursery. And also is damaged pretty badly, actually. Um, Alright guys, this is a great stopping point, so in the interest of time, uh, we'll be back on the next video. Thanks for watching, uh, hope you've enjoyed, and hopefully we'll see you next time.